For, uh, thanks for coming and seeing the film. Uh, I'm Lieutenant Commander Scott Goosens, call sign Jamami. Uh, in the film, I was Blue Angel number three, uh, the left wing, uh, in the 2022 season, and then I moved over to Blue Angel number four for the 2023 season. Howdy, everybody. I'm uh, Major Frank Zaskopil. I was the training officer number four in that movie in there. I got to work with him every single day and then sit across the table from Chewie here. My call sign's Chomps, and thank everybody for coming out here today. How's it going? Lieutenant Commander Kerry Rickoff, call sign Chewy. Uh, in the movie, you guys saw me as Blue Angel number five, the operations officer, and Dean Solo, uh, finishing up my fourth year on the team there. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Major Jackson Strife, uh, call sign 511, and I was a C 130 demonstration pilot from 2021 through 2023. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming out. I'm Commander John Fay. I was the executive officer of the 2022 2023 team. Uh, and really just got to work around some incredible teammates and make sure that we were pursuing the goals that we wanted to go after. Uh, glad to be here, thank you. I'm Commander Kevin Lacasso, I was number eight on the 97-98 team, call sign Lax, and I was on the team when they produced the first time next movie. Afternoon everyone, uh, Clark Merritt, I was the maintenance officer, or Mo, that'd be my call sign, 96-97 uh, team, and uh, it's great to be here, thanks. I am Wayne Baldor. I have no idea why I'm here. The team is on the from uh, 1986. Uh, I was on the last A4 team as the narrator, and then I was a uh, solo pilot the first two Hornet teams. Made me feel real old, and Boss Kelso Ring says, I was in Fargo, North Dakota in 1986 as a four-year-old, or however old he was, you know, like the air show, so it dates my time. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Uh, first off, for the, for the guys that were in the film, uh, obviously, you knew you were being filmed, you went through the whole process, but now that you've seen the film, what's kind of your takeaway about, about how it came off, how you were portrayed, uh, how the movie came together and showed what you guys did? Uh, sure, I'll start off. Uh, I think the movie, we enjoyed the movie very much, as you guys see, it's got some pretty uh, unique aerial footage that hasn't been taken before. Um, and I think one of the things we were very concerned about on the team and took a great deal of effort to do is uh, not make it a confidence <laughs> problem. Like, we acted like we normally act. And we tried to things along the way. Couldn't make it go uh, see how, we, how we interacted and how we operated, uh, but we did not change who we were or what we were. Uh, so I think they captured that very well. And they did a pretty good job there. I think another challenging part about getting filmed over the entire course of a year with everybody was that you have a microphone literally strapped inside your flight suit, and those flight suits are already super tight, so that got pretty uncomfortable. And then the uh, additional cameras, they were everywhere. So we're used to in the film, we're used to having people out there taking pictures everywhere, but having an IMAX camera literally this close to your face, and you're doing an interview, and there's three other dudes sitting around the corner waiting to talk to you or ask questions or whispering and all these different things. It was, it was something that would know, at least we as pilots, you know, we just fly an airplane, we're not used to getting in front of an IMAX so that was definitely something outstanding. And then what did that do? I think it actually created our team to be a little bit tighter over the course of that year. Something so different than any other team really had before. Uh, and the insertion of a documentary, uh, 20 people, 20 people extra in the team, they were following us around on the show side. So it kind of made us as a team a lot better. Yeah, it was really interesting as a uh, first year pilot on the Blue Angels when we were making the documentary. Uh, everybody talks about the camera and how cameras and how everything was different. And, for us, it, everything was new, everything was different. So the fact that there were IMAX cameras around and you know film crews everywhere was just, 
it's, it might as well have been normal for us just because we didn't know any better. So I guess that was probably a, a good thing being a being a new pilot. It really wasn't until the following year that I realized how much uh, how much was going on in that first year uh, that we were on the team. Uh, but I think having seen the film now, I think they did an excellent job of really giving the public an inside look at the Blue Angels. And something that you know hopefully this film does is not everyone is fortunate enough to live in Pensacola and have access to see the Blue Angels, you know, almost every single week. Uh, and we try to do as many air shows as we can around the country, but not everyone's able to, to see us. But hopefully a film like this kind of extends the reach of the Blue Angels and allows people who maybe, you know, aren't fortunate enough to be able to see a show to be able to see something like this in a, in a local theater or on Amazon Prime streaming. And uh, hopefully it inspires that next generation. Like I know so many of us up here were inspired by the Blue Angels in the past. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Uh, for the guys now that, that we're not in the film, but obviously we're with, with Blue Angels, how much did this kind of bring it home to you? Like, recreate, relive your experiences, and how how uh, how true did it kind of ring for you while uh, watching it up there on the screen? It was unique in that um, it was almost 30 years ago being on the team. To we were really exposed to Boss Boris, uh, Al Tadeo, the original team members. And then to go and see these guys, the young guys, and sort of look at I don't feel so old, but damn, I look at these guys. To be able to link the two, you guys really have carried on that tradition that when you hear El Tadeo describe that, or Butch Morris in these early days, and you guys kept the tradition going, uh, it's inspirational. What struck me about it is uh, how much things have really not uh, changed since uh, Lax and I were on the team. I mean, uh, it, it's just the sense of purpose, uh, and then the execution, day after day after day after week after week. Um, you know, the, the early mornings in El Centro, and then and then the glory air shows of like San Francisco and Miramar. You know, all that was captured you know very nicely in the, in the, in the film. And then it, uh, yeah, it does bring you back. It does. And I was uh, going to the restroom like everybody else afterwards. Uh, Terry Kimes was there. He was the front man when I was on the team, and he said, "Do you miss it?" I said, "For 35 years, I haven't missed it, but I do now." You know, and the people who saw the said to me, "It's like, you know, would you would you still be flying airplanes with me? You could." Oh no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's something you know, you'll always cherish and miss it. I know these guys uh, very little, but I've met them all over the years, and I feel like we're all cut from the same cloth. That we yeah. came from different eras and generations, but we still. Sure. I know one thing that struck me was, was the candor. I mean, we all look at these guys as kind of superheroes, uh, where you guys were really honest about being nervous, about uh, uh, feeling not worthy, those kind of things. How important is, is that part of it, to be that honest about, about the doubts, about the, the mistakes? Uh, I, I think to that point, one of one of the things that the film means to me is really to all y'all's point. Not everyone does live here in Pensacola, and we we love calling Pensacola home. It, it's a special place that, that we we do get to call home and, and be here, and the public knows a lot uh, here. But what they don't know, sometimes you have to. The starting point with the Blue Angels is uh, you know prima donna type, right? and that, that's what people immediately think. And we had boss Kessler, you know, so always say you have to. You have to talk them back from that, walk them back from that. And I think the film does a great job of showing that, showing the, the outstanding character and integrity and work ethic of, of the people that make up the team, both the pilots, the hardworking maintenance and support staff. Uh, and I, I just think it's a tribute to what the, the amazing film crew put together that will now kind of broadcast that to the mass. Yeah, for sure. I think one of the things we always talk about is. Um, you show up day one and you don't know anything. So you're a Navy pilot, you've been in the Navy for 10 plus years, and you can fly a plane pretty good. You can show up the wings like, I have no idea how you're doing that, and you realize you have to learn it. Um, we always look kind of the imposter syndrome, so we wanted to make sure people realized it's okay to kind of feel that way as long as you outwork it. So you can outwork that and show up to something good, but uh, kind of one of the things that uh, Fizzle was saying that struck me is. People often always see these things and ask us, like, oh man, you guys are famous now. And the best part about the Blue Angels is like, not, not one of us on this panel is famous. It's the press that everyone recognizes and knows in the blue suit. So once we take that off, we're just back to being a normal Navy pilot, normal person. Uh, but the team and that legacy uh, continues on, which we love.
Well, let me ask you guys this. Obviously, it's a special already, so the experience is going to live with you forever. But, but being uh, the, 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 the guys that were, when the film was made, you know, the fact that it was a film made of your crew, uh, how much special, how much more do you feel like that's going to uh, enhance uh, you know, your experience as you have this to look back on? Yeah, I don't, personally, I think it's kind of cool that the movie was made about the 75th anniversary team, 2022, all these different aspects about it. But it's, like Chewie just said, it's not about us. Like, the whole point of the team is about that blue suit inspiring the next generation for service the country and culture of excellence. Like, it's not about the team. And if that little bit gets across in that movie, that little bit of the next kid that we saw at that show line who might be in this movie, not just us, but like those people at the show line, people at Pensacola Beach, everybody out there might be in this movie as well. And to see them, and maybe they come back, and then maybe they're the next Navy pilot or Marine Corps pilot. Hopefully, Marine Corps pilot, right? <laughs> 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 That's a joke. Yeah, maybe Marine Corps pilot. Um, those type of things, but we truly, truly want to see how this movie, at least, at least from our perspective. Uh, I think she hit the nail on the head. It's, it's not about us. I think it was great when you would go take off that flight suit and then you go to the exact same place where you just stand in five minutes prior and nobody knows who you are and you can just do normal things. Be a normal human being. Yeah, I don't have too much else to add. I think Chewie and, and Chomps kind of nailed that one. Um, it's about the team at the end of the day. I mean, sure, you know, by stroke of luck, we happened to be on the team when they when they made the film, and you know, it might be a nice time capsule for our families one day. But uh, you know, hopefully, the film goes on to inspire others to uh, to pursue uh, a culture of excellence, really, in service the country, which is uh, really why we all signed up to do this in the first place. So. It's not about us, it's about the, uh, it's about the press, it's about the blue suit, and it's about the future of men and women in America that hopefully this inspires. Yeah, for the older guys, uh, what, what jumped out at you the most? Like, what, what kind of grabbed you or, or brought you back the most? Any, any scene, any moment uh, that kind of, kind of touched you or you came to the thoughts in your mind? I had to smile. One of the most memorable things is when you find out you made the team. You know, and the unique experience of mine is I was in the same building. I got called down to the boss's office, got the old, you know, thanks, you know, thanks for applying and stuff. The coolest thing was is all of a sudden everybody's sneaking in behind, you know, me in the boss's office. And at the time I was an instructor, all the students, everybody in the passageway, and when they said welcome aboard the team, man, I just brought that almost tears. They also were also shocked by me. Now what have I done? And you got some big shoes to fill. Thanks for passing to the old guy. <laughs> they make jokes about that, but uh, I'll just make kind of an unrelated comment. I remember saying to somebody a long time ago, uh, I had two lives. I had a life that I lived before I was a Blue Angel, and it was great. I was a Net 14 Tomcat pilot, Miramar, love and life. And then somehow they picked me as a Blue Angel. And if my life was this great before, it's been this great ever since. It's been 35 years, and that having been a Blue Angel has taken me places and done things for me and exposed me to opportunities I would have never had anywhere else. So, uh, it, you know, we do things in, to let the public see us, but it's done so many things for all of us. I think we all agree that we've been enriched 10 times over for our time. We're, uh, you know, you guys study the film all the time, you look at every little thing, but when you see it like in this way, was it, was it different a little bit looking at it, you know, through the lens of what we saw here? Pass it to the uh, most recent training officer. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chaps. Uh, I think it was special to see. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it, the movie was filmed in 2022, it's now 2024. Uh, I was in my first year in 2022 when we filmed it, and now I'm not on the team anymore. So I think it's uh, it was very cool to go back and kind of see the team, and everyone up here will tell you that every single year, every team is completely different than, than the year prior. So it was very cool to be able to go back and revisit uh, that 2022 team and uh, and uh, see, all, uh, see all the faces from that team and see the formations that we were flying and what we were doing. And, you know, at the time, it's such a blur with the cameras around. There's helicopters in the aerobatic box that we were flying right next to. I mean, you basically plunged your nose right at one on that uh, Delta breakout. But uh, it was really cool to see it all come together. And I think the uh, the filmmakers uh, did an incredible job. And I think if if nothing else, uh, people are going to walk away from this film and say the uh, the aerial cinematography was was second to none. So it was it was very very cool to see and. 
you know, unique vantage points that, that no one has seen uh, with the Angels before. So uh, I know we certainly enjoyed it. I hope everyone else uh, enjoyed it as well. Oh, yeah. Woo! Uh, one thing I did take away as I was looking around yesterday when we got to a little sneak peek at the film is every single one of us in a blue suit was actually still critiquing our formations up there. Believe it or not, they sure did. No, I called me and I was out of position there. But that's what this team's about. It's about finding our mistakes, owning them, and then still revisiting it two years later because you can never get away from it, right? So that's what it's about, finding that and constantly seeking perfection. I think Chewy nailed I'm going to butcher his quote at the end, but it's those, it's those little moments that you're finally finding that perfection. And those are the moments that you're going to take away. Uh, and I think you said it in the last like, three to four minutes of the film or so. That's fine. <laughs> sure. Uh, but that is like those little things. And that's kind of what we're striving to do. And uh, you got to see a little bit in the movie. Uh, but that we would spend hours and hours and hours of our life critiquing ourselves, starting with ourselves, before we even talk about how we affected that team. So that's kind of true. Uh, the train officer told us the solo was talk. <laughs> about instruction, so. Um, good. I love seeing the perspective of the attendees and all the, all the fans down there watching. Uh, was that a little bit different for you guys? Was that, was that kind of a neat part of it? And then I asked if it was two or three? Uh, absolutely. I mean, it's always great to, what we do is party for the fans, right? Uh, obviously, there's some personal um, pride in making sure the show looks great, but our whole purpose is to take the show on the road and show anybody in the U.S., Canada, wherever we may be uh, flying, what the U.S. Navy is and what the U.S. Navy forces can do with their air Marines. Um, but uh, so to be able to put it on screen and let many more people enjoy it, either in a theater or in their own homes, uh, watching it in their, their living room, that's what we're hoping to do is, is as we kind of talked about earlier, inspire the next generation. Sorry to keep it on the, the old guys on there. <laughs> I remember being a kid, I, my dad and his family born and raised in Pittsburgh, Florida, so I used to come down here all the time. And I remember sitting in the IMAX at the Naval Aviation Museum watching Magic of Flight and uh, watching a year in the life of the Blue documentaries. And the fact that I'm now on a, a panel being in a movie of my own, it's just, you never know what seeing something like that can trigger, as I mentioned. And uh, it's crazy how everything comes full circle. Yeah, what I learned in the film too is that uh, Chomp's first Blue Angel show was at a Fort Worth show, and I was at that same show as a kid. <laughs> Interestingly enough. You probably uh, <laughs> Inspired me, I guess. Uh, it's also worth note that uh, you know the pilots don't get to see that immediate feedback from, from the fans as, as the show's going on. So uh, some some of the footage there showed you know showed the fans' reactions to the maneuvers, which I, I, I kind of found that pretty cool for them to get to see because you see it as a khaki newbie, and then you don't see it unless your you know communications card and where you know our safety observers are. So uh, I think that was a new vantage point for them to see. And, experience that. How about the bond with Pensacola? Obviously Pensacola is a really special place because that's, that's your home base for this and we're here today, all the people coming out just to see you here. Uh, how much, I mean, you have to film but just day to day, a lot of you still stay in Pensacola, from Pensacola. Uh, how, just how special is that bond? Uh, how important is Pensacola to, to make the Blue Angels what it is? Like I say, we're, we get to be the home team here. Uh, that's pretty special. Uh, other places you may just sort of blend in, but here you, you get to really be a part of it. I think, and speaking for all of us, I don't think we're ever able to do as much as we want to because of that busy, busy show uh, season that we maintain. You know, 32 show sites between mid-March to early November with El Centro at the beginning of the year for winter training, and oh, by the way, training flights in the, in the winter training cycle. So there's not a lot of opportunity as much as we'd like to get out to the community. So. This has been a great, a great way to do that. As you say, when we arrived here uh, today and, and peeked in the theater, I was, uh, I was surprised to see how packed it was. I was, I would have figured that y'all would be uh, tired of watching us fly, and, uh, but it was pretty cool to to come to the theater here in Pensacola, where, you know, we are. I don't want to say old hat, but you know it's pretty easy to see us. But then seeing all the support that we get from the community, and I think that's just a testament to to how much this uh, this town really means to this team. That they're kind of synonymous with each other, right? Blue Angels and Pensacola. It's hard to think about one without the other. So uh, thank you all so much for the support that you not only give to the team, but to all of our families running away and for making us feel like home uh, every single time we're back in town. And I I know we wish we could 
fly almost all of our air shows here if we could, just because of the, the support that we get from you all. But uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I know I live off of Nine Mile Road, and on Sundays when you guys fly over our neighborhood, it's, I mean, it gives us chills every time. Uh, any uh, any other thoughts? Any, anybody else? Anything else jumped out to you about the movie? Anything what you want to uh, relive or, or share with us? Hey, Steve. Just because this is like a one-off, and we have a crowd here, speaking of Pensacola, that probably has a question or two. And so if, if you guys can indulge this group, I want to start. Um, can you hear all right, or do I need to walk with the mic? Okay. Um, since Jackson had had uh, much opportunity to talk, but watching that uh, shot of Fat Albert taking off and going into the, I don't know, it was 30, 45 degree climb back there, and that shot, I, I guess, was from the helicopter. Can you describe that and just tell me what your thoughts might be on that? Yeah, so uh, there was a few days in Pensacola where uh, Kevin LaRosa was out with his, uh, I don't know what the name of the helicopter is, but it had one of these really amazing cameras on the front of it, and uh, they said they were going to be doing some aerial videography, and I was like, okay, cool, that sounds great. Uh, what I didn't know is how close he was going to be all the time, starting from like when we started the engines, and I look up, and you know, I could see his green eyes in the helicopter right in front of me. I was like, you know, hey, back, back up, man. You know? um, but then uh, we had uh, Lance Benson, uh, was uh, you know, a, a former Blue Angel that was on the helicopter with him, which made it feel a little bit better. Uh, he's a jet pilot, so I don't know what he would have done to save me. But <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, we briefed him beforehand that he was going to be in these certain positions and uh, where he was going to be for all these maneuvers. Um, so he was, you know, laterally separated from where we were going to go. Uh, you know, I don't know if he was in that spot or not. I was just kind of pressing the I believe button and, and hoping he was where he said he was going to be because, uh, uh, yeah, we're not super maneuverable at that point. Uh, but yes, I definitely saw him out of my peripheral, like coming up there. And I was like, you know, <laughs> we were doing the same thing we do every single day. Uh, and we were just hoping that, you know, they were going to be in the right spot. It ended up being a really cool shot. He got a lot of really good. I thought that was the coolest part of the movie, from my opinion, was all that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, everyone here is a Fat Albert fan anyway, so. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was, uh, it was a really cool experience, for sure. Awesome. Pretty awesome. Right? Any, any other questions? Anybody else want to jump in? Yes, sir. I'm a retired Navy senior chief. Been here in Pensacola since 1969. Saw all the blues fly when you were in the Tigers and uh, in Winston Salem, North Carolina. But I think probably the most thing that I like about the Blue Angels is on Sunday afternoons, yes. that sunset fly in, yeah. that beach, it caramel. Yeah. 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 Beach bus. Don't stop. <laughs> Beach buzz. Yes, we we get, uh, for fat to fly over. Yes, we do. <laughs> we get that sense, especially now with the advent of social media and you know, people, uh, it's pretty easy to find us and talk to us. But especially, as you guys know, our schedule is pretty busy. We do a whole long show weekend. It comes out Sunday, and we're all kind of in the brief and get ready to go. And in our head, we're like, oh man, it would be nice to just go back home, you know, go as fast as we can from show site, Pensacola, land real quickly and get out. But Thank every you. time, we're like, no, nope, we can't do that. We're going to do the beach run. Um, it's one of those things that I think is a very special thing and a very special part of Pensacola. Uh, nowhere else in the world can you get a, a beautiful sunset over crystal white sand beaches and emerald waters with six or seven. Uh, and then a uh, C-130 coming down, paint of blue and yellow, coming over the water uh, with some smoke on. So it's, it is definitely something we take a lot of pride in, and it's our way of you know, giving back to the city of Pensacola as a thank you for letting us make a lot of noise over your city continuously and causing traffic uh, when we're doing a show. Uh, so I promise you, it uh, takes a little bit of you know effort for us to get in the mindset, but we love doing it just as much as you guys love seeing it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Woo! Thank you. Wayne and Israel. I'm 
your probably your biggest fan. I've been around with the Bloomfield since when he joined the team in 1986 when he came on board as the narrator. Um, I want to thank each one of y'all for being Blue Angels. I know it's a challenge when you first walk in. I know it's difficult, but thanks a lot. I appreciate it. I need you to do me a favor. Right now, there's mixtures going on with the Stanley County of uh, your practice times, okay? We need to keep you here. There's a push in El Central to pull the team to El Central, okay? We don't need that. We need y'all here in Pensacola. Y'all been here since 1954. So if you can help us keep going here, I'd appreciate it. Thank you so much. And thank y'all being a Blue Angel. And one blue is higher blue. direction to, to bring out the point of what your wives and your children and your families go through with y'all gone 30 days a year. So uh, as a well as military wife, I'm just thank you for bringing that point to you. Thank you. Is that, is that a good part of it? You know, showing the, the family, you know, how big is that for you guys? You know, understanding what that means. Uh, I like to thank my wife right now. She's sitting right there. <laughs> yeah. And I was very, very lucky that my kids got to be in the movie as well. So that's going to be a little time piece for us to take forward. Uh, but no joke, the families is a tough one. That's one of the toughest parts about personally about being on this team is you're gone for 270, 300 days a year. And you kind of get pictures and FaceTime your kids growing up. And then the next thing you know, they have long hair and not snotty noses. And, you know, yeah. I guess he was healthy that day. Uh, but it, that's definitely a challenge. That's definitely a challenge. Finding how you can balance your home life and then something performing on this elite private performance team that every single person here knows about, it, including Boss Jernigan, who we haven't mentioned yet, uh, who's here local principal. He goes to almost every single one of our show sites as well. So he has to do that family balance too. So I think that's a, a very critical part, and we all have our own techniques to try to manage that sort of stuff. Yeah, let, let, let's see what Boss Jernigan also. Come on, come on in. Uh, All right, boss. Uh, it's very much an honor to be a part of the Blue Angel team. Uh, I've, I've had the privilege of being uh, a friend of the team for 46 years. Uh, and uh, just before I forget, Wayne Moen over here, if you go out to the Grand Marlin on Pensacola Beach, if you go into the restrooms uh, on the left, there's a big picture of the Blue Angels, a couple of them sitting there with Trader John, and Wayne is in the in It's the, not in the restroom. <laughs> it's just an honor for me uh, to, to be uh, a part of the team and the wives love me because they know that while the guys are out of town they can call me 24-7 and, and I'm going to be there to help take care of things. I tell the wives, don't ever call your husband crying, call me crying because he's going to tell you that's what you need to do they, so they can stay focused on their job. But uh, yeah, it, like I said, I'm I'm just standing by for the next phone call. But thank you so much. Woo! All right. Well, if there's no more questions, uh, let's give uh, one more round of applause for these guys for being here. All right. Good job. Well done. Show more people uh, about what they do and how special they are. I appreciate all you guys for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.